Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Clanfield, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at that something that is very simple to do, but hard to implement, and this is file management. I think we've all found ourselves in the situation where we have a folder with video, audio, graphics, VFX, all sorts of different things in the same folder, and we're trying to make a film, a edit out of this big mess of footage and audio files and graphics. So it's very important to have good file management. So I'm gonna show you guys what I like to do, something that I've gotten used to doing and I've built this file structure that I like to do and use across all my projects that I do. Basically what I have is one master folder with lots of subfolders and I just copy and paste that one and I restart my project in that same folder. So I've actually included that file structure down in the link in the description if you guys are interested in downloading that. It's basically just a zip folder with a bunch of subfolders in it that you guys can follow along or use or create your own. So there you go. It's in the link in the description if you'd like to have that. So I'm gonna show you guys on my computer the file structure, why I've done what I've done, and then how to import that file structure once you are ready and have your footage embedded into the folders, how to import that into your editing software, whether that's DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, it's very similar throughout all of them, but I'll be using DaVinci Resolve today since that's what I use to edit. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so welcome to my computer. As you guys can see here, this is the back end on YouTube. I have all the YouTube videos I've created up to 44. We're number 44, so that's pretty exciting. We've made 44 videos. Once I get into YouTube 44, you'll notice that I have file organization tutorial. That's the one that we're working on right now. So I'm gonna show you guys how I organize that. Underneath it, you're gonna have all these ones. So basically when you guys download, if you guys download that file structure that I put in the link in the description, you guys are just gonna get this little zip folder called Andrix File Management. Inside there, you're gonna notice that you guys have all the file structure numbered and everything like that. And underneath each one, you guys are gonna have project files. And at the bottom of every single um, folder, you guys are gonna have a little JPEG called delete me. This basically acts as a dummy file because Windows zipping tool deletes empty folders when zipping. This is a dummy JPEG that prevents that. So that's why I put that little JPEG. You guys can just delete that. Once you delete it, you guys are gonna have a little file management system like this that is working and you guys can just copy and paste. So that's what I do. I grab this one and I just copy and paste it onto my new YouTube folder called YouTube 44. And then I have my file structure right here. And I can just go ahead and reuse the folders as I do. So let's start from the beginning. So files at the beginning, this is anything that has to do with project files. As you can see from YouTube, I'll have a thumbnail, so I'll keep a thumbnail reoccurring. So I just copy and paste that same thumbnail file so I can continue creating thumbnails. This is just a 1920 by 1080 uh, file that I just keep on using for all my thumbnails. So that's where my files go. If I have any like After Effects projects or even Premiere project that I'm using in my Resolve projects, I can just drop them in here and use those files in my edits. So that's where I keep my files. So the next one is footage. Footage is basically what it sounds like, A, B, C camera and drone. I include three of them because sometimes I use up to three cameras, but when I don't use them, I delete them. For example, in this project of YouTube, I'm not actually using three cameras. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one so it doesn't clutter my folders. I also did not shoot any drone footage. So I'm going to delete that folder. I have used a camera, which was my A7 III. As you notice, I did label it A7 III. I find this important so I know what camera was shooting what. What? Uh, B camera could be your GoPro footage or your cell phone footage, or if you have another camera, it could be your other camera. In this case, I just shot some random B roll footage of my setup recording us that I may use, may or may not use. So that was actually just shot with a Sony A6000. One, two, three. So there's my A6000. That way I know what footage it is and how it was shot. Now underneath each one, if I have more than one day, if it's a bigger project, I might have two folders in a different dates and sometimes even to the point that I put uh, times inside of the folders. But in this case, we only had one and I just put outside because that was a location. We had some footage, we went to Cambridge uh, in Ontario and we just shot some footage. So I threw that footage into the outside just so you guys can see how I import it. And then in my other folder, which is today, on the 8th, I have Talking Head, which is basically that little intro that you guys saw when the video started. So that's where I'm gonna throw that in. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is audio. Number three is audio. Uh, we have dialogue. So dialogue is that audio footage that you heard from the beginning. If I have more than just the dialogue shot on the task cam, I will label them. So I'll task cam, or I can say lapel and I'll throw these ones inside of it. And then maybe I have like road, 
a microphone or I have a shotgun or something like that, then I can know what was recorded on what microphone and what might require different settings in the edit. So that's what dialogue would be. Um, music is any music I'm using for the project. If I download it from Epidemic Sound, Musicbed, or any licensing music, anything like that goes into here, my music folder. SFX is basically any sound effects that I'm using. If I'm downloading any sound effects or creating my own sound effects or pops and swooshes, that goes into sound effects. So that's where I keep my sound effects. Um, then my graphics. This is anything that has to do with graphic. As you can see, I have a bunch of different graphics that I'm going to be using in this project. For example, the file structure JPEG that I used in Gumroad for my thumbnail. So that was one of the graphics that I used. Here's some other graphics that I had to create there for the Gumroad. So that's where I have those, that delete me folder that I put inside the file structure, a couple arrows. I also have another folder called end screen. So this is basically where I just dump a bunch of graphics that I'm gonna be using in the project, just so I have them all organized. The last one is images. This basically I use for two things. One for reference images, as you can see, I've got some reference images here um, that I can use if I'd like to. And then I could just drop in some other footage. Let's say I shot some pictures in that I wanna show in the video and that's where I'll drop them and create sequences out of this uh, folder of my images. All right, so now for the fun part, how do we import this structure that we've created outside of our editing software into our editing software? Well, let me tell you, Revinci Resolve for the longest time, I did this the wrong way and it was very frustrating. As you see here, I'm in my media page. What I thought is you had to right click and say import media but you'll notice very quickly that it doesn't want to import any folders. Every time you click a folder and you say open, it's looking for files, which is fine because then you would import it, but then you have to do this for every single file. Well, the second thing I did is I would grab the folder and then come over here and drop it as you would think as a Premiere Pro user, I would think of just keep the file structure, but no, it would just dump all the files like this and combine them all, A, B, C, camera, drone footage, everything. And it was just redundant because we had just spent all that time creating this file structure and it was not getting copied to resolve until I figured out that you have to drop it over onto this panel here on the left side. So go to your master folder, which is the first one, file organization tutorial. That's your parent folder. And then you're just gonna drag that not here, but to this little side panel. Once you do that, it's gonna copy everything you've done, all everything that's inside of every folder, talking heads there, my B camera is there. My outside shots are there. Uh, my graphics, if I have any, let's see, oh, I do have my end screen. I have my graphics. All, everything has been copied as it should. So that's great to know and it will save you so much time. Now, if you're editing Premiere Pro, you don't have to worry about this weird issue here. You can just drop your folder and it'll create your folder structure as it should. Once we've done that, then everything else is as simple as you would normally edit. This is not an editing tutorial, but I will show you just how I create my timeline. I will grab my talking head, which will be my beginning one, and I'll just drop it in there. Now, once I've done that, you'll see that it creates a timeline. So that's my timeline. I will grab this and I will drag it over to files here. So if you remember files was my project files, now I have it organized so that at the top files, I have my thumbnail that I can edit, and then I have my timeline here. And then I can just continue editing. Now, you can take this file organization a step further, and I usually do. What I like to do then is go to your folders and then color code stuff by the frame rate. This is something that I like to do when I'm mixing frame rates. Here, I do know for a fact that all this was shot in 24 frames per second, but just to confirm, I go over to this little section where you can see all the stats and I filter it by frame rate. So I'll just go down and I see, is there anything but 23.976? No. So I highlight everything here and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna change the color. Let's say clip color, I'm gonna change it to green. So this is something I've gotten used to doing so that when I drop it off, I know green means, green means go, so I don't have to do anything to edit that. But if I have anything that's slow motion, I know for a fact that my B footage was all shot in 60 frames. As you can see, 60 frames. So I highlight all my 60 frames, I right click it and I say, clip color and my standard color for 60 frame is yellow or an orangish color. So now I know when I go to edit, if I, let's delete this, if I drag over this clip, as I drop it in, I'm like, oh, that's orange. That means I can go here and then I can change that up to 40% and slow it down. And that is my B footage there. 
the same way I can go over to my outside footage here and I grab it and drop it off, it's gonna be green, which indicates that it was shot in 24.976 frames, which means I don't have to do anything to it and I couldn't slow it down even if I wanted to because it'll just be very choppy as you can see. And then we could take this file organization to a step further. I sometimes like organizing them by scene. So for example, this I know for a fact that was shot in the same lighting, same scene, it was both outside one after another one. So I'm gonna to want to grade these the exact same. So I'm gonna select them, right click them, and not change the clip color, but instead change the flag. I'm gonna change it to let's say blue. Doesn't matter what color it is as long as it's not the same as something else like this one here. This one should be a different color. Then I'm gonna go over to my talking head. I'm gonna right click this and say, flag, let's call this one yellow. And you might ask me, why did you do that if you only have one clip? Well, you see, when you go to edit here, let's just go ahead and drop this here, and let's say I cut it up like this, like a normal edit, and now I have my edit here. And let's say I remove this one because I messed up, and this one I messed up. So now I've got, I don't know, these many clips. And let's say I have a bunch of things on top of it. So from outside, I'm showing some other outside shots. So I have all sorts of shots like this in my B-roll there in another one here. So what happens is now that I've got all this edit and I go over to my color grade, well, I want all my footage to look the same. So if I go here and I show my clips, as you can see, I've got one here, one here, one here, and one here. So I guess I could copy and paste the same grade onto every single one, but it's easier to make them into a group. So now that I've got a little flag selected because it's one scene, I can go over here and say, show me the flags that are yellow only the yellow ones. Now I can do control A, select them all, right click, add them into a new group. I can call this group me talking head. Now that's into a new group here. Let's choose a better frame, my hero frame. That's a little bit more hero-like. I can go over to my post clip and then anything that I do here will be across all of them because they're all linked. As you can see, there's a little link in the bottom. So let's say I fix the white balance or something like this. I add a little bit of blue there. Well, let's exaggerate it so you guys can see it. If I add a lot of blue, all these ones are gonna get affected because they're all linked. So that's what is super cool about these little flags and being able to link up all your scenes. Well, hopefully by the end of this video, you guys can have a better file structure and something that is great to get into practice and be able to use it across all your projects. It just makes things a lot easier. Thanks so much for watching. Like this video, subscribe, and make sure to share this video to someone that you know probably could use the help with file management. I'll see you guys in the next video.